best Valentine's gift I've ever received. Best Valentine's Day gift. Best Valentine's. Best Valentine's. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Wow, that sounded like a really important news story. Not. So let's get to the important stuff. Here's some proof that the media is biased against Bernie Sanders. This is a poll of polls. The red line is Hillary Clinton and the brown line is Bernie Sanders. You have to ask yourself, what happened on this day right here? Bernie Sanders gets a bump in the polls between, say, January the 8th and January the 12th. To understand this, we have to understand how the polls are done. It takes about four or five days worth of phone calls and gathering data. So it's actually reflecting the opinions of earlier, somewhere around, say, January the 2nd. Ask yourself this question. What was the mainstream media story on January the 2nd? Where did you go for New Year's Eve? Did you watch the ball drop? What about the Boxing Week sale at the big box store that buys advertising on this television news station? Do you see politics on TV news on December the 25th or December the 24th? Did you get all your holiday shopping done? How's your Christmas tree look? Look, it's Santa, he's at the mall. What I'm saying is there was a two week period during the holidays when the media doesn't say anything about politics. But we, we were saying something about Bernie Sanders, and that led to a bump in support for Bernie Sanders. If you need some more evidence, let's go back to the poll. January the 17th, Hillary Clinton gets a little bump up in the polls, because if you go back about seven days on January the 10th, you'd see stories on the news like, is Hillary Clinton the woman of destiny for America? Are you gonna vote for Hillary Clinton? I think I might vote for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton seems like she's talking good stuff for the American people. The mainstream media opened up their mouths again. There was a two week period during the holidays when the mainstream media didn't say anything about politics. And we, us, we did say stuff about politics and Bernie Sanders gained support. And then the mainstream media opens up their mouth again and Hillary Clinton goes up a little bit. Free Valentine's Day 2012 app by magicsolver.com. Did that seem like a news story to you? Just look at the look on her face. She knows it's a fluff piece. This is what we call embedded advertising. It's not just that the media is biased against Bernie Sanders. It's that they are biased for themselves, for their own interests. The media is so predictable. Every holiday, they have these fluff stories, feel good stories. Oh yeah, about the billionaire who gave $10,000 to the kids. Oh, isn't he such a wonderful person? And you can get discount chocolate for Valentine's Day. And you can get a free piece of cake at this chain restaurant. St. Patrick's Day, all the students are drinking their green beer. And what about all that green that they spend on their education? And what about the planet 20 years from now that's not gonna be green? I like my broccoli to be green. For this Valentine's Day, I wish a more caring society rather than a society of greed on Wall Street. And for Pancake Day, how about raising the minimum wage so people can afford to have syrup on their pancake? Mother's Day, social security that allows American mothers to live in dignity. Health care that allows American mothers to live. So I send this out to the universe Everyone who's supporting Bernie Sanders, pick up your iPhone, make a short video, wish someone that you know a happy holiday of some sort, and tell them a little bit about Bernie Sanders. The media has its weakness. How you can find someone to love for Valentine's Day so Hallmark can make a few more bucks. Thanks to Bernie 2016 TV Live. Hopefully you like this video. By all means, do whatever you like with it. Thank you. Bye. If you sent a Valentine this year, you had plenty of company. The U.S. Greeting Card Association estimates that one billion Valentines are sent around the world, making this the second biggest day for cards outside of Christmas. If you want to know who's responsible for this frenzy or who to blame, you can credit Esther Howland. Though Valentine cards were popular in Europe for centuries, it was Esther who got the ball rolling here. In 1847, she got a Valentine from England, like what she saw, and ordered lace and paper to start making them in Massachusetts. She sold them at her father's stationery store. And of course, the rest is history. Clearly, Esther was on to something. Over a century later, the humble Valentine continues to thrive. Even in the era of email and text messaging, sometimes when you care enough to send the very best, you just have to use a stamp.